Well, we discussed recently that embattled RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel will be exiting that role. And now former President Donald Trump has announced his endorsement of North Carolina GOP chair Michael Watley to replace her as head of the Republican National Committee. The announcement comes. Trump has increasingly pushed for Ronna McDaniel to step down. Now, Trump will also support Laura Trump, his daughter-in-law, to serve as the RNC's co-chair. Trump said in a statement, quote, the RNC must be a good partner in the presidential election. It must do the work we expect from the National Party and do it flawlessly. That means helping to ensure fair and transparent elections across the country, getting out the vote everywhere, even in parts of the country where it won't be easy, and working with my campaign as the Republican presumptive nominee for president to win this election and make America great again. So McDaniel is someone who has come under fire from all corners of the GOP and Republican and conservative media in recent years, um, taking a lot of the blame for the Republican Party's lack of electoral successes since 2016. I don't know that these were necessarily fair to blame her, but she is the one who has taken the blame, so she is exiting. Um, I don't know very much about this Michael Watley figure. Um, it seems like he is more, I, well, I would say that he's even more of a Trump loyalist, but. Ronna McDaniel was exceedingly loyal to Trump herself as well. She even dropped Romney from her name at his request when he was mad right. at Mitt Romney. But, um, but the most interesting part is probably the Laura Trump co-RNC uh, chair situation. Laura Trump is, uh, is um, Eric Trump's wife and has been a very uh, effective surrogate for the Trump family, Trump campaign on TV. She's on Fox and other outlets routinely, um, and uh, you know I think this goes to show just another s step in the transformation of the party into just Trump's party. Yeah, I mean, for all of the discourse around campaign rigging, primary rigging, um, Democrats being hypocrites around democracy, uh, having politically motivated campaign um, the prosecutions of Donald Trump and all of that. I mean, Donald Trump is a leading presidential candidate in the middle of an election season, um, forcing out a RNC chair who has been nothing but conciliatory to him yeah. throughout. It's not a good look, I would argue, especially if you're going to replace her with your daughter-in-law. I mean, we're in a place where people are openly celebrating nepotism in political dynasties. I watched a really interesting um, uh, focus group discussion over on Breaking Points about RFK Jr. And it, I was really surprised to see several people in that focus group say, we just, we love political dynasties. Like, we love the Kennedys. We love the idea that, like, that family could be back in the White House, which just seems so deeply un-American to me. Um, but New York, the New York Times uh, just put out a—sorry, uh, not the New York Times. New York Magazine uh, covered this story and opined as to what's going on here and why Trump prefers Watley. Um, they say, the New York Times reported, that Trump preferred Watley for one overwhelming reason, according to people who have discussed him with the former president. He's a stop-the-steal guy, as yeah. one of the people described him. Lara Trump, a former personal trainer and producer for Inside Edition, has likewise demonstrated her complete reliance on her father-in-law and energetically endorsed even his most deranged election conspiracy theories. So is, is that all it comes down to, being committed to election denialism? Well, being committed to whatever Trump tells you to be committed to, and that is what Trump's committed to. So yes, um, yeah, I, I think it's not a good strategy. I mean, we remember, of course, when he immediately put um, his daughter and Jared Kushner in charge of vast swaths of policy, something that frankly did annoy even some staunch Trump people at the time. Ann Coulter has since become a prominent critic, massive critic of Trump on the right. But um, at the time, she was still uh, very supportive of him, but, and she was harshly critical of that move. That's, you know, again, something monarchs do is putting their own um, family members in charge. And that ended up being not a good decision from a, even from like a MAGA standpoint, because Jared Kushner's um, policies, which I know you and people on the left have criticized for like personal enrichment reasons, um, were actually seen as too kind of globalist and, and against the consensus on, on those kinds of things from the right. So, uh, so you know. And to be Here clear, Ronna Romney McDaniel, Daniel, obviously, another political dynasty, but to, to yeah. really have a sense of how far she was willing to go with kind of election trutherism, 2020 election trutherism, um, she, she called the 2020 election 
Um, she said it had, quote, problems that were, quote, concerning and that it was, quote, not fair. She said, I think saying that there were problems with 2020 is very real. I don't think that's election denying. I'm from Wayne County. We had a woman send a note saying, I'm being told to backdate ballots. We had to look into that. That's deeply concerning. She alleged that she had friends who were poll watching and being kicked out, said that's deeply concerning. And so, like, I can understand that that maybe is not as full-throated as Trump would like. Concerned. But, you know, she went pretty far into saying, yeah, there's a reasonable basis here for us to have questions about 2020. That wasn't enough um, for Donald Trump. Not and even so, close. Uh, she's out, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, in a, in a different paradigm, you could theoretically have someone like, a, like an RNC chair would be thinking about the future health of the party. And obviously, while, while Trump is beloved by enough primary voters to easily win the nomination. You know, you could look at it from in terms of the health of the party and see that he is not the He's not the person. Well, he might very well defeat Joe Biden. The polls suggest right now that he would. They also suggest that any other Republican would have even more of a chance. And, you, you know, you might be thinking of the long term health of the party. But the Republican elites, everyone who has said, you know what, now is the time I'm going to go against Trump. This is just I got to get off this train. The whole party's got to get off this train. They have every single one of those people has gone down to humiliating defeat as Trump has forced the party to be not just um, not just still open to him, but more on board with him than ever. And it's not at all healthy for for the Republican Party, for democracy in general, for defeating Joe Biden, in my view, or whatever other Democrat comes along. If, if Trump doesn't win this election, I don't know why he wouldn't be the candidate in 2028 as well. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think people are saying like, "Oh, he'll never run again." I'm like, "Who are you? What, what do you mean he'll never? He will never depart freely of his own volition. He will never exit the political scene until he's literally term limited out or he's dead." Yeah, that's my view. I mean, sure. When you think about how we got here, as in the case of so many instances in which public public desires don't seem to align with political outcomes, it does seem over and over again that the world just burns because. There's too many people who are frankly very well off who are unwilling to lose their jobs. And I see that happening on the left with people who don't stand up on principle all the time. Um, I see it happening in the union context even. I see it happening in the political context. It does seem like there are people who, there's, it's always a collective action problem, right? Yeah. You know, I stuck my head up, I got beat down by Trump, so no one ever wants to do it again. But if all the nails raise at the same time, no, I. Or maybe all... it doesn't work. But you stand on principle, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, you're a millionaire. Take the lick, and and go out with your integrity. It could be one Liz Cheney or a hundreds. They're all going to lose. Okay. It seems like. Well. To me. That's, I wrong. that's why we live in the world that we live in because there's zero people people with that attitude that it's better off just to look out for themselves because it's not going to work anyway. Create the ultimate reality that that nothing is ever going to change. Hmm. Well, that does it for us for Rising today, but it is only Tuesday, so we have so much more show to produce this week. We're very excited about it. We will be back tomorrow with another edition of Rising. Please stay tuned for that. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. For those of you who prefer to listen while you're on the go, we're now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.